Oh, who doesn't love Maxwell's equations? I love Maxwell's equations. And so uh, one of Maxwell's equations is Faraday's law of induction. And so I really wanted to uh, demonstrate that today because as someone who majored in physics and always um, really enjoyed physics and all of my physics instructors, um, you know, Faraday's law of induction is, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating relationship between induced EMF and a changing magnetic field. And while you're in physics and you're doing all sorts of calculus problems to kind of work this every which way you can, um, it's, for some students, it's a, it's a difficult concept to grasp. And so uh, they might have experienced something like dropping a magnet through a coil so that they understand that, you know, there is some induced EMF or they might have seen a compass needle deflect. And so they can, you know, there are some ways to visualize what's happening with an induced EMF. But what I wanted to show today was a different way of, of uh, showing Faraday's law of induction using um, some larger coils and a, um, and we're, what we're, we'll all kind of explain this in a bit. Let me talk a little bit about Faraday's law of induction just so we can all get kind of on the same page. What do we need to do? Other side. Other side. Yeah. Rubbing against your jacket. I'm sorry about that. And while they're doing that, Brett, there's a comment that came in on our on our live forum. Ivan is saying, make sure you show him something that's going to keep him awake in the Philippines. Oh, so excellent. Ivan well, in the Philippines. Faraday's Law of Induction is a great way to stay awake at night anywhere in the world. And so what, what Faraday's Law of Induction says that if I have an electric field and I do a closed loop integral around that electric field, that's going to be equal to the uh, time, the negative time rate of change, and that negative is very important, that's Lenz's law, the negative rate of change of the uh, changing magnetic flux, which is the integral of B dot DA. So if I have a, um, a, an area where the magnetic flux is changing through that area, the time rate of change of that flux is going to be equal to the induced EMF, okay? And so that's what I'm going to show you a different, a different way to demonstrate that that's, that's really, that I think is really cool. So, so what's going on here? Well, I have uh, our 550 universal interface. And the 550 interface, what it does is it has a built-in signal generator. And I'm using that as my driving potential. And so I am going to be running uh, current through this coil. And we know that a... That a current through a wire generates a magnetic field. And so this wire is wound around many times, which gives us a stronger magnetic field. And so I'm going to be have, have a large field here. And then I have a, a smaller coil. So this coil here has a, a much smaller diameter. And it actually has more turns. I think the turns here are four, 200. So this is a 200 turn coil. This is a 2,000 turn coil with a smaller geometry. And connected to the coil is a voltage sensor. That's also connected to the 550 interface. And so what's nice about having the, the voltage sensor and the signal generator in a dedicated unit is they're all timed together nicely. And you don't have to worry about having separate power supplies and separate voltage sensors. They all just work in an integrated unit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, what we call the a detector coil, which is connected to the voltage sensor, and I'm going to be able to detect the induced EMF because I'm going to be driving this coil with a changing voltage, which is going to give us a changing magnetic field. So over in Capstone, I have my first tab has all my equations if I want to uh, lecture to my students like that. The second tab has the 550 connected to capstone and I have an oscilloscope display. So this is a live scope display and I will turn the 550 on. And then in the, uh, in the controls panel, what I can do is I can change the waveform. Uh, and in capstone, you can have a DC square, triangle, um, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so I'll just click this down here so you can kind of see these are the different waveforms that you can use in Capstone. We're going to do a triangle wave. And the reason I'm choosing a triangle wave for the demo is because, you know, as we've just talked about Faraday's law of induction, what we're saying is that the induced EMF is equal 
to the time derivative of what will be my driving field. And so it sh what that tells us is that the induced EMF should be the time derivative of whatever I'm driving the larger coil with. So if I have um, slopes happening, then, you know, if I have a, a changing voltage of, you know, a certain slope, then my induced EMF will be the derivative of that function. So let's try this and see what we get. I'm going to keep this far away from the coil right now, and I'm going to start this up. And so you see right now, my coil is picking up something. <laughs> so I'm going to focus on my driving field here. Here we go. So the green, so the green triangle wave you see is the changing voltage. This is be, being driven with a triangle wave. And so that's, it, that, is in, that is giving us a varying magnetic field inside that coil. And of course, outside too, to a lesser degree. And so you can see over here in the controls, if I, oops, there we go. You can see it, I, here I can change my frequency if I want to see uh, more cycles. And this is also showing you that this is live. So I'm changing the frequency. You can change the uh, amplitude as well. So here is my uh, detector coil. And I'm going to take this over here. And you see as I get close, what did you see? Oh, look at that. Look at that. So notice that the induced EMF is what we would call a square wave. And I'm gonna, let, me, um, let me select both of these so you can see see them both. There we go. We've got some stray fields in here. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, then it's, it's moments like this where I just love physics so much. <laughs> so you can see that as I get this in here, I am in, I'm inducing an EMF and that EMF is a square wave because that square wave is the time derivative of the driving potential which is a triangle wave. And then the great, so the great thing about this is that this is a hands-on way that students can explore Faraday's law. Yee, yeah. Law. So as I move this around, you can see I can look at different parts of this field. So I'm holding this outside and you can see it's a square wave. It's, the amplitude's not as big because the field's not as big here. And if I move this inside, you see that amplitude grow. And you can kind of move it around. Now, what would happen if I took my detector coil and flipped it around? Well, as I go perpendicular, it goes down to zero. And as I flip it around, you see it reverses, right? Because again, the induced EMF is due to the changing magnetic field. And this is where you'd want to talk about the right-hand rule and say, well, the current's going in this direction, so I've got a um, which I think the current, yeah, the current's going in this direction. So if I right hand rule that, I'll know which way the magnetic field is going. And then I can kind of conceptualize how's the magnetic flux changing through the detector coil. And you can move this around and see which is going to, uh, you, know, you know, determine a positive potential versus a, a negative potential. Another thing we can do is if I take this inductor wand, which is 2,000 turns, and swap it out for an inductor wand that is less turns, what would we expect to happen? And so as students are studying coils, they uh, learn that there's a relationship between the number of turns and how that affects the, uh, the EMF that can be induced in that coil. And you see here clearly this is a lot lower EMF because it has fewer turns, right? Excellent. So here's another way we can apply this is I'm going to stop this here and I'm going to go to another popular physics demonstration, which is the ring launcher. And so the ring launcher uh, gives us a way to talk about some Faraday's law and also Lenz's law. And so I've got some rings here and this again, I've got a coil and it's driving a much higher current. And then uh, I have an iron core, because another thing we learn in physics is about how 
um, cores, or in this case, iron cores, can intensify the, uh, the magnetic field. And so when I hit this button, this is just a momentary switch here, it's going to pulse the magnetic field right here. And so one way we can visualize that is this is a light bulb, which on the back here, there's a coil. And so I can see right now if I move this around this iron core, not much is happening. But if there is a changing mag if there's a changing magnetic flux, a changing magnetic field through this coil, we should be able to get an induced EMF. Let's see if we get that. And sure enough, so we're getting an induced EMF, which is lighting the light bulb. That's awesome. But I'm, and I can, and as I'm doing this, I can feel, I can feel the magnetic force. So there's a magnetic force happening here. And in physics, we love forces. So if I have a solid ring, this is made of aluminum, and I lay that there, what will happen is the, the magnetic flux through the aluminum produces eddy currents, Lenz's law kicks in and says, hey, let's go the other way. And what will happen is you get an induced EMF that launches this ring into the air. Wow, that's awesome. Let's try that again. I'm gonna put this on and nothing happened. Because this ring, if you can see that, is, does not make a complete circuit. So this ring is cut, so we just fooled the students. Um, what about a smaller ring? Like that, not as high, because we don't get as big of a repulsive force. And this is copper. What will happen with the copper? Well, one thing I know is that, wow, this copper is a lot heavier. So it doesn't go quite as high as the aluminum. And so that, my friends, yes? John Wilson has written in and said this appears to him to be a nice way to talk about step up and step down transformers. What do you think? Um, yes. Yes, I think you could definitely do that. Absolutely. So that's all I had for Faraday's Law. Thanks for joining. I think we're going to have another um, interview with another person at PASCO.